Hi, Mass Bankov from Kaiser Power Electronics. When it comes to buying a oscilloscope, it is uh, important that you pay special attention to uh, what your needs are and a few specific specifications in order to get a measurement equipment that you can actually use for the work that you want. So a lot of people have bought these uh, small DSO 138 from China. This is a very cheap kit. Um, comes with a complete with a plastic enclosure and. Uh, screen and probe and everything and uh, it's a single channel 200 kilohertz um, oscilloscope so let's get it as assembled test it up against a uh, quality um, dso and see what this really can do at w and what shortcomings it has this uh, was bought with a complete enclosure so uh, let's see what we uh, get here we have a probe a small uh, yeah, thir 30 centimeter um, cable Crocodile clips, 50 ohm BNC connector. There's a user manual. We'll check that out uh, for details, but seems to be a part list. How to uh, assemble it, uh, where to put uh, all the different components. So not exactly a user manual, but more a, a simply manual. But here we can uh, at least see what kind of parts I should expect to find in here. Here is a how to use. We'll take a look at that uh, later on. Here we have the main board itself. With the, the screen mounted on, uh, sits loosely here. There's a lot of components to uh, solder on here, but all the uh, hard SMD components and microcontroller and such are already pre soldered. Here is uh, the input board, has uh, at least uh, two adjustment uh, potentiometers there, but all the uh, Logic chips, uh, SMD components have also been, been pre soldered on. That's nice. Here's uh, the plastic case. Oh, it's in two parts. All the rest of the components. And then in here we have the rest of the enclosure. That seems a uh, Pretty good quality, it's uh, sturdy, um, doesn't seem brittle at all. Yeah, that's, that's nice. So we will get that used as the last thing. There's a little piece of paper down here. Oh, C6 in the box, ceramic capacitors under step two, in page two should be 150 picofarads. So there's a little correction. Oh, oops. Uh, in the box as well. That's nice. So let's just get this put together. Before starting the assembly, um, uh, the first step is to check the main board. So apply 9 volt DC to the plug, and we shall see it boot up. Um, and it does. DSO shell. Trick, trick, trick. That is a very tricked oscilloscope right there. So let's get the rest of the components on. Just a few quick notes uh, for you that want to uh, assemble this. Pay attention to the uh, manual, because I did not do that. I did not notice that I have to solder the encoder into the small PCB. So I actually soldered it directly onto the main PCB, so I had to desolder that again. As you can see uh, from the uh, yeah, couple flex here, I had to do a lot of desoldering in order to get that potentiometer out again, or the uh, encoder. Uh, another thing is that you have to work a lot with the display uh, along the front panel here. So really be careful not to break the flat band connector. Now the um, 
trimming adjustment uh, for the calibration. And that's actually quite neat. Um, it's good to see that it actually has this uh, self-calibration uh, built in, that you have the, a good description of what to do. Now, assembling the whole cover itself, that is a little tricky. It's like everything just not fit that well after all, so it takes a little mingling before you get it all fitted in. But now, as you can see, it's running uh, and we can adjust it, so uh, yeah, it's time to test it. The DSO 138 sits now here next to my HP 3324A synthesizer function generator. Right now we are watching a uh, 1 volt, um, 1 kilohertz signal, which is also, uh, is also shown on the measurement uh, menu over on the DSO itself. As you can see, it measures peak-to-peak, uh, 2.2 uh, volt, and uh, yeah, a good 1 kilohertz. It should be 2.0 volt peak-to-peak. Uh, -peak. But let's see what happens once we uh, zoom in a bit. If you pay uh, attention to the frequency measurement, we can see that it starts uh, going off. It's uh, actually uh, over 15% off now. That is pretty bad when you zoom in. So it requires um, yeah, around 10 measurements or so to get it precise enough. So let's try to go uh, up in frequency a bit. Let's just take it 200 um, or 20 kilohertz. This is uh, one tenth of the um, bandwidth. See, it does that just fine. See if precision, yeah, that's still pretty bad once you zoom in. Now we are also at the uh, maximum zoom range already. Can that really be? It says it goes to 10 microsecond per division. Yeah. So this is actually the maximum zoom, zoom range, which, uh, yeah does not make this <laughs> look pretty once we see 200 uh, kilohertz. So let's try that. Yep, that's pretty much all over the place. That's absolutely useless. And this actually makes the uh, a good discussion sub uh, subject for the uh, Nyquist frequency and sampling rate. So let's take a look at that. Digital signal processing and analog to digital conversion is really interesting subject when it comes to um, electronics and basically is uh, really fundamental for many uh, sampling circuits uh, and also comes uh, in play for something like a Tesla coil. But it is not necessary to really understand the whole theory behind it. But in order to get a measurement equipment, you need to understand the limitations of your equipment and the frequencies that you want to measure. So for that, um, we have the Nyquist-Shannon theorem, which basically goes about how many samples you need in order to get the true waveform of a signal you want to measure. Now in this small um, simulator here, I have adjusted the, the uh, sam signal frequency to 20 hertz. We can just say that's 200 kilohertz. Doesn't really matter that much about the scale as long as the sa sampling frequency is there about. But as we can see, the blue signal up here is the original signal. And if we sample at 500 kilohertz, that looks awful familiar to the signal we saw on the DSO 138. The DSO 138 does not suffer from having a too low sampling frequency, so we do not see a, a aliased waveform, which is what happens when you sample slower than your waveform. So if, if we try to turn the sampling frequency down, we can see the red dots is our sampling points, and we can see the F Nyquist uh, marker here in the overview. Once that gets gets below the um, the blue marker, we will start seeing a aliased waveform and that means that now this green dotted line here is the waveform we think we are seeing or the measurement equipment will see that and that is very far from representing the actual waveform that uh, we are measuring on so it is very dangerous to 
believe in what you see on a measurement equipment if that equipment is not up for the job. You can find this um, small guide from Tektronix. It's a uh, 12 things to consider when choosing a oscilloscope. And this uh, goes through a uh, few good, uh, very important uh, issues, which is bandwidth, rise time, matching probes, fast sample rate. And fast sample rate has to do with what we just talked about. Then there is, of course, also something about versatile triggering, uh, advanced uh, waveform measurements and such, and long record lengths. Um, and a few other things, but those are the most interesting to us. So let's just get down to the fast sample rate. And here we can actually see the small example here that you will have a bad reproduction of your uh, waveform if you have too, uh, too few samples. So uh, check the guide out if you are going out to buy a oscilloscope, but please do not buy the DSO 138 if you are measuring on something higher than 20 kHz. Now having checked the um, sine wave going up to 200 kHz, uh, let's go back to look at the square wave. Here we have uh, a 10 kHz uh, square wave. It shows up uh, yeah, with a little bit of rounding on the edges, but let's just say that's okay for now. But that is 1 20th of its bandwidth, so let's uh, double that up, 20 kHz. That is starting to get uh, real bad, and actually we have a little uh, overshoot now, that's interesting. Let's uh, take 50 kHz. Wow. We are going into sawtooth by now, that is extremely bad. This is 1 4th of the advertised the bandwidth. Oops, let's see what uh, 100 kilohertz looks like. Yeah, that's practically practically a sine wave not by now. It does, however, measure the frequency good enough, but that certainly ain't no uh, square wave. So this is practically useless going over... Uh, yes, 50 kilohertz, that's still useless. you got no idea about your... Rising it and uh, for uh, trailing it and such. 40 kilohertz, nope. 30, yeah, borderline. I'd say 20 kilohertz seems to be uh, the uh, the absolute maximum that you should use uh, the scope at if you want a precise measurement. That is. In order to test the uh, automatic trigger of the DSO, let's try to do a sweep and see how good it follows uh, with the rising frequency. So I'm doing a 10 volt peak-to-peak uh, -peak measurement. And we will do a start frequency of uh, 1 kilohertz. Stop frequency, yeah, there's no reason to go to 200. Let's just go to 100 kilohertz. And let us do that over 10 seconds. Let's see how that looks. Okay, so it seems to catch the frequency pretty well. It's not that stable. Let's see if we can switch to the uh, square wave. And run the uh, same test, sweeping. 1 to 100 kilohertz. As we see as we go down again, that now at 50 kilohertz. 30. 20, yeah. It is pretty bad even at low frequencies uh, for square waves.